What's up everyone, I'm Eldritch, and someone at Wargaming has been a very, very bad boy. So when 0.3.1 released, Wargaming of course also released a set of patch notes. Sadly, those patch notes weren't exactly complete. Now personally, I think that's unacceptable, but this video isn't supposed to be a judgement or anything like that. It is merely supposed to provide the community with a source for the actual list of changes for all of the ships in the game. After all, we're supposed to test this game, and how can we really do that with incomplete patch notes? Before I get going, however, I have to give a really big shout out to someone I only know as DDOD on Reddit. He runs the website wowsdb.info, which is an amazing source for all the stats and intricacies and everything you need to know about the ships in World of Warships. He graciously provided me with pre-0.3.1 screenshots of all the ships, and you should definitely go check out his website because it's really, really good. And you can find the link in the description. Now let's get to it. I will periodically quote the patch notes, and you can find a link to the patch notes in the description below. The first quote, Arming threshold has been raised for AP shells. Penetration threshold has been lowered for HE shells. And damage from HE bombs has been increased. Now I believe this to be an error. It's probably supposed to mean the arming threshold for HE shells has been raised, and the penetration threshold for AP shells has been lowered. Basically what this means is that AP ammunition has much much worse penetration after the patch. And HE shells won't explode until they've flown a couple of hundred meters. And it is true, the damage of HE bombs has been increased, but that's only half the truth, because the AP damage has also been decreased. That doesn't really have anything to do with the lowered penetration, the lowered penetration probably just means that on average the damage is lower, but the maximum damage has also been lowered. And so let's take a look at the guns first. I sorted this chart by guns, because listing the guns for every single ship in the game would have made for an insanely convoluted list. Firstly, the US Navy guns. The 102mm gun on the Samson, Wickers and Clemson has had its HE damage buffed by 960 points and its AP maximum damage nerfed by 240 points, bringing the HE damage to 1900 and the AP damage to 1700. Very similarly, the 127mm gun used on the Nicholas, Farragut, Mahan, Sims, Benson, Fletcher, Gearing and Atlanta has had its maximum HE damage buffed by 1130 points and its AP damage nerfed by 270 points. Effectively, for all American destroyers in the game, this means that HE ammunition is the default ammunition now, as the maximum damage is higher, and because of the lowered penetration values of AP shells, the average damage is also higher. Sadly, it's not so easy to set anything on fire with these, because they still only have a 5% chance to do so. The 152mm guns on the Erie, Chester and St. Louis have had their HE maximum damage buffed by 960 points, while they had their AP maximum damage nerfed by 340 points, bringing the HE damage to 2500 and the AP damage to 3000. The 152mm gun on the Phoenix and Omaha have had their HE maximum damage buffed by 950 points up to 2600 and their AP ammunition damage was brought down by 350 points to 3100. And the 152mm gun on the Cleveland has had its HE ammunition buffed by 960 points up to 2600 and had its AP ammunition nerfed by 360 points down to 3200. Now while the 152mm guns on these cruisers still technically deal more damage with their AP ammunition at maximum level, because their penetration has been lowered, it is much, much harder to actually penetrate anything at all. And if the target is angled, it is practically impossible to penetrate. Making the AP ammunition really only useful when firing at angled destroyers and light cruisers, as well as heavy cruisers side on. Because that is so incredibly specific, it's usually much more sensible just to use HE ammunition. The 203mm gun on the Pensacola and New Orleans have had their HE maximum damage buffed by 940 points, while their AP maximum damage was nerfed by 470 points, bringing their HE damage to 3200 and their AP damage to 4600. The 203mm gun that you get on the Baltimore and the Des Moines have the same HE ammunition, but their AP ammunition lost 490 points of maximum damage down to 5000. 
even though these guns had their AP ammunition so severely nerfed, they're still capable of dealing really good damage against cruisers, but when firing at battleships, just load HE. With the Imperial Japanese guns, the changes have been even more one-sided. The 120mm gun used on the Umikaze and the Izokaze have had their HE ammunition buffed by 1460 damage, while their AP ammunition got nerfed by 240 damage, bringing their HE ammunition to 2500 damage and their AP ammunition to only 1800. The also 120mm gun on the Wakatake, Minekaze and Mutsuki have had their HE ammunition buffed by 1440 points to also 2500 and have had their AP ammunition nerfed by 260 points down to 2000. And the 127mm gun found on the Hatsuharu, Fubuki, Kagero and Shimakaze have had their HE ammunition buffed by 1480 points up to 2900 and had their AP ammunition nerfed by 320 points down to 2700. Just like with the American ships, there's absolutely no reason to ever use your AP ammunition, because on average it's going to always deal less damage than the HE ammunition. Sure, if you get AP penetrations on other destroyers, you have the chance to sometimes deal more damage, but funny enough, even the HE ammunition can now deal citadel hits on destroyers. So far I've not had a single situation where AP ammunition on destroyers actually dealt more damage than HE ammunition. And can I just say that the 120mm guns on the low level Japanese destroyers now do exactly the same HE damage as the low tier 152mm guns on the American cruisers? I mean I'm not a chemist, but an HE shell is really just full of TNT. And there's really only so much TNT you can cram into an HE shell. I mean, who knows, maybe the Americans really were watering down their HE ammunition. That would indeed be a shocking discovery for historians everywhere. The 140mm gun found on the Katori, Tenryu, Kuma, Kitakami and Yubari had its HE ammunition maximum damage increased by 1480 points up to 2900 and had its AP ammunition nerfed by 320 max damage down to 2700. The 152mm guns found only on the Chikuma have had their HE ammunition damage buffed by 1460, whereas the AP ammunition got cut by 340 damage. The 155mm guns on the Mogami have had their HE ammunition buffed by 1630 damage and its AP ammunition was nerfed by 370 damage down to 3300. The 203mm gun on the Mogami, Furutaka, Aoba, Miyoko and Ibuki had their HE ammunition maximum damage increased from 2170 to 3800, which is an increase of 1630 points. And the AP damage was cut by 470 points down to 4700. The 203mm guns on the Zhao have had the same basic maximum damage stats, increased to 3900 and 5400, making her one of the only ships to receive an increase in AP maximum damage. For the Japanese cruisers this is even more obvious than for the American cruisers, especially for the ones with the 140mm guns. Using AP ammunition has become completely redundant on these ships. It's all about the HE ammunition, baby, because that penetration has also been lowered, making the HE ammunition just outright more useful. And on top of that, as we will see later in the Japanese ships section, the chance of fire has also increased for most ships, making HE the obvious choice for most of the Japanese. The 203mm guns on the high tier cruisers can still work with their AP ammunition, especially the Zhao with its 5400 points of damage on the AP rounds can do some serious serious hurt but anything less than 203mm shouldn't even bother. The 305mm guns on the Kawachi have had their HE damage increased by 1510 up to 5300 and had, their AP, and had their AP damage cut by 690 points down to 8100. The 356mm guns on the Miyogi, Kongo and Fuso have had their HE ammunition buffed by 1700 damage up to 5800 and their AP ammunition damage was cut by 810 points. The 410mm guns on the Nagato and the Agami have had their HE ammunition damage buffed by 1590 points up to 6400 and the AP ammunition was nerfed by 960 points. The 460mm guns found on the Yamato have had their HE ammunition buffed by 1370 points going up to a respectable 7000 and the, AP and, and the AP damage was cut by 1060 points down to 14800. 
Now the battleships seem to still work completely fine with AP ammunition, and so far at least in most situations I have found the AP ammunition to still be better than the AG ammunition, simply because the guns have such high caliber and presumably incredibly high penetration. But it is still interesting to note that their AP damage has still been cut across the board quite significantly. Now let's briefly talk about the premium ships. I will have a separate video for the premium ships as an addendum to my reviews. The Gremiashi has had its turning circle buffed from 630 meters to 510 meters. However, at the same time the rudder shift time has been decreased from 3.5 seconds to 6 seconds. Furthermore, its HE damage was increased from 1120 to 2300. That is an increase of 1180 points. Its AP damage was cut by 310 points down to 2500. The Mormansk has had its turning circle buffed from 820 meters to 590 meters, which is just 80 meters more than the Gremiashi. The Mormansk is of course in Omaha, so it had exactly the same ammunition treatment as the Omaha. The Aurora had its turning circle buff from 730 meters to 400 meters, but had its rudder shift time nerfed from 8.4 seconds to 12 seconds. Its HE ammunition was buffed by 1080 points and its AP ammunition nerfed by 320 points. The Albany has had its turning circle buffed from 490 meters to 350 meters. The Atlanta has had its turning circle buffed from 830 meters to 610 meters. The Sims has had its rate of fire nerfed from 13.3 rounds per minute to 12 rounds per minute. The Kitakami, as stated, received its smoke screen ability this patch. However, the patch notes failed to mention that its max speed was going to be reduced from 36 knots down to 32 knots. Its chance of causing fires has been increased from 9% to 12% and its torpedo reload has been cut from 137 seconds to 109 seconds. The Yubari has had its turning circle buffed from 960 meters to 560 meters, putting it on par with the destroyer. Its rudder shift time, however, has gone up from 5 seconds to 6 seconds. The chance of fire has gone up from 9% to 12%, and the torpedo reload time has been shortened from 63 seconds to 49 seconds. A very solid buff for a ship that desperately needed it. The Warspite had its rudder shift time buffed from 20 seconds to 18.5 seconds. The patch notes talked about how it was going to be more accurate at short ranges, but the dispersion at max range has also increased from 226 meters to 219 meters, and its chance of causing fires has been nerfed by 1%, down to 34%. All US cruisers have had their turning circles buffed by at least 100 meters and up to tier 8 most of them now perform like destroyers. It is important to note that American destroyer turning circles go from 500 meters to 640 meters, which means the cruisers are now very very close in maneuverability, especially at the higher tiers where the maximum speed of destroyers dips. For example, the Mayhan has a 570 meter turning circle and the Pensacola only has 620, only 50 meters more. And the Mayhan is only 2 knots faster at 35 versus 33 knots. And this is why it's important to look at these changes critically, because when you look at them on paper, they actually sound insane. The New Orleans has had its chance of causing fires nerfed from 15 to 14 percent. And the Baltimore has had its rate of fire increased from 4 rounds per minute to 4.6 rounds per minute, as was stated in the patch notes. When it comes to the destroyers, apart from the ammunition changes already mentioned, the Samson, Wickes and Clamson have had no changes whatsoever. However, beyond that, all American destroyers have had their rate of fire cut down to 12 rounds per minute. Going from the humble 13.3 rounds per minute on the Benson, Fletcher and Sims, over the previous 15 rounds per minute on the Nicholas, Farragut and Mahan, up to the previous 20 rounds per minute on the gearing. On the gearing, this is a 40% DPS nerf. Something as major as this has to be in the patch notes, Wargaming. I'm not gonna go into incredible detail on the carriers. If you want to read those numbers, then pause the video right here. But basically, a couple of carriers across the tiers have lost a squadron. Most of them have had their dive bombers buffed. At the lower tiers, the fighters have been nerfed. And at the higher tiers, the fighters have been buffed. Again, pause the video if you want to look at it in detail. Now for the Japanese ships, and boy oh boy have there been many changes. Once again, all Japanese cruisers have had their turning circles buffed, and some of them quite significantly by over 250 meters. The changes are not so pronounced at the higher levels, however, with the Zhao receiving absolutely no maneuverability buff whatsoever. All Imperial Japanese guns have had their chance of causing fire with HE ammunition buffed. Again, pause the video if you want a closer look. 
The patch notes did mention that 610mm torpedoes would have their reload time buffed. And they did. The buff is about 20% and is a bit more pronounced for destroyers than it is for the cruisers. Beyond this, the Kuma has had its maximum speed cut to 35 knots. Down from 36. The introduction of the Zhao has actually brought a nice set of buffs to the tier 10 Japanese cruiser. Increasing the rate of fire by 0.3 rounds per minute, as advertised in the patch notes, but also increasing the hit points from 39,400 to 44,900. For the destroyers, apart from the gun changes and fire chance increases, the Umikaze has had its turret traverse buffed from 36 seconds down to 22.5, which actually renders its guns usable. The same thing has happened to the Izokaze at tier 4. But sadly, everyone's favorite destroyer has been nerfed. The Minikaze's turret traverse got hit and is now 45 seconds, previously being 30 seconds. The Hatsuharu has had its turret traverse buffed from 30 seconds to 25.7 seconds. A minor but welcome increase. Now the Fubuki is a bit odd, because before the patch it used to have a turret upgrade that just simply nerfed its rate of fire from 10 to 6.7 without actually giving it anything in return. And so the gun upgrade was useless. But that basic set of guns also had a 45 second turret traverse speed. But this has been changed completely as the basic gun on the Fubuki now has a 36 second turret traverse speed and a 6.7 rounds per minute rate of fire. The previous 10 rounds per minute is no longer available on the Fubuki. And its gun upgrade now reduces the turret traverse speed to 25.7 seconds. The Kagero had its rate of fire buffed from 5 rounds per minute to 6.7 rounds per minute and had the turret traverse cut from 45 seconds to 36 seconds. The Shimakaza had its rate of fire increased from 5 rounds per minute to 8.6 rounds per minute, and its turret reverse was cut from 45 seconds to 25.7 seconds. Now I can understand why they changed the Fubuki to bring it in line with the other Japanese destroyers, but that's really just a nerf, because all of the Japanese destroyers are still worse than the American destroyers at tier 6 and above. These changes definitely help the Japanese destroyers and make them quite a bit less awful than they were before, but even with their nerfed rate of fire, the American destroyers arguably are still better. But one thing that is definitely clear is that these turning circle changes were a massive nerf to destroyers. Every single ship in the game, apart from the Zhao and the Yamato, that isn't a destroyer has had its turning circle buffed severely. To the point where some of the American cruisers are ridiculous ridiculously maneuverable now, and some of the American battleships have better turning circles than the American destroyers. So while the maneuverability for destroyers wasn't directly lowered, increasing everyone else's maneuverability, with maneuverability supposedly being one of the strengths of destroyers, has nerfed destroyers. And on top of that, US destroyers have had their rate of fire cut, nerfing their DPS quite severely. Now the Japanese battleships are pretty straightforward. The Kawachi had its maximum speed nerfed by 2 knots and its rudder shift time increased by 0.5 seconds. But apart from that, every battleship except the Yamato has had its turning circle and rudder shift time buffed. Yes, the mighty strength that was supposedly the American battleship's maneuverability has rubbed off on the Japanese battleships as well. And this is why I originally wanted to make this video. The patch notes make it sound like this mobility increase is a global thing, when it really isn't. It's a direct buff of everything that isn't a destroyer, which makes it a direct nerf to destroyers. As written in the patch notes, the Congo and the Fuso had their turret traverse times nerfed. Quite severely in the case of the Congo, from 37.5 seconds to 54.5. And the Yamato had its top speed cut by one knot, its rudder shift time increased by one second, but had its rate of fire buffed from 1.7 rounds per minute to 2 rounds per minute. Phew, and that's what real balance patch notes look like. When you look at all the numbers, it's very clear to see that some ships that needed a nerf got a nerf, some ships that needed a buff got a buff, and apparently destroyers were way too good and needed a proper spanking, and battleships were really really weak and needed a proper buffing. Now that we know the actual facts about the patch, we can maybe finally start talking about the problems with it. So what are your opinions now that you know all of the patch notes? Make sure to leave a comment, post on Reddit, or talk about it on the official forums so we can have an actual discussion about these things. And there's no more excuse because here's all the numbers. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. And holy crap, I know this video is way too long, but this shit is important, damn it! I will make an addendum on my premium trip reviews based on these patch notes very soon. But until then, I've been Eldritch Master Donkey, and I'll see you in another video.